Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I just want to do a channel update. Got some things going on that uh, hopefully will be of interest to you. Uh, some new drones. Uh, then I plan on going to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Thanks to you people, uh, I qualify for that. I have enough views on my channel. I was able to qualify for a media credential to get into CES. So I'm going to travel down there to Las Vegas and spend a few days and hopefully run into uh, some of our uh, fellow YouTube droners. I know Billy Kyle's going to be there. I know uh, uh, Ken Dono is going to be there and I'm sure several others. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and then, uh, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Skydio 2 and the Xeno 2 uh, that are coming out. And then we really need to touch on uh, the, the new proposed uh, FAA regulations. And we're in a, a, a period of public comment. And so I would like to encourage you all to comment to the FAA on these proposed new rules because they're going to have a drastic effect on our hobby. So, uh, yeah, we might as well start with that. So let's talk about the, the new rules, the ways of remotely identifying your drone. So what they're saying is uh, that I think we have uh, a period of public comment, and I can't remember how long that is. I think it's just a few months. Or I think we have just a couple months, I think through March, to comment. So what I'm saying is send sooner rather than later, right into the FAA and tell them uh, what you think about it. My concern is, is that how many times have we seen these kind of rules uh, published and uh, yeah, they go through a period of public comment and then they just get implemented. Uh, and I think there's probably a lot of uh, big money behind this commercial applications. I think the last thing the FAA is worried about is we hobbyists. So we all need to rise up and make our voices heard. But let me quickly explain it to you and, and why I'm concerned about it. So the standard remote identification, and I'm cheating, I've got it up on my computer here. Uh, what they're saying is not only will your controller uh, uh, talk to the internet via cell, uh, your drone itself, the drone itself will have a transmitter on it that uh, transmits the drone's information uh, to the FAA and law enforcement. But even of more concern to me is the general public. So anybody in the public will be able to know not only what you're flying, where you're flying, uh, but where you are standing with your remote control. So, you know, we can all kind of figure out what kind of problems that could cause in and of itself. And of course, we don't know all the details yet. By general public, do they mean that anybody can look at that real time? I'm assuming that's what it is, because the whole point of this is real time so that you can uh, identify where drones are at and what they're doing. So that's going to require a whole new kind of drone that has a transmitter on it uh, that can not only receive information and tell you where other aircraft are at as the drone flyer, but also puts your information out there uh, so that, uh, like I said, law enforcement, anybody else can see where you're at. They'll, they'll really be able to control it as well as the uh, general public. Uh, and I think that the, the, the only upside I can see to this is I think it's gonna allow us to fly beyond visual line of sight. Uh, but what I'm gonna tell you is what other part of your life is tracked like that? So just because we fly a hobby drone uh, doesn't mean that, that, that we're looking for trouble. Let me give you an example. Say you're a mountain biker. I think we can say that, that bicycles probably kill a few people every year, right? People having an accident on a bicycle and falling and hurting themselves or running into a pedestrian or something like that. I'm sure, I don't know the statistics, but I'm sure if you looked at the yearly statistics, they're fairly significant. Now, so 
bicycles are dangerous, right? We need to regulate bicycles. So the equivalent would be the government wanting your bicycle to have a transmitter on it to know where you're going and where you're at every minute that you're out there on your bicycle and probably knowing if you're wearing your bicycle helmet and uh, so forth. It, it really is the same thing. So if they're not tracking that, why are they tracking us in our drones? Uh, another analogy that I thought of, and you know, out here in the West, we have a lot of hunters. Uh, a lot of people are really like to bow hunt. They hunt with their bow and arrow. So the equivalent would be uh, them wanting to track your bow and every arrow in your quiver uh, so that they know not only uh, where you're at with your bow at any given time, but where every one of those arrows goes that you that you fire out of your out of your bow. It's it's really the same things. Why are we subject to that with drones? If you look at drone statistics, has there been a single instance of a drone uh, that's that's killed anybody? I don't know anything about it. The the only incident I know of that can be proved that a drone hit an aircraft was the guy in New York City a couple of years ago with a Phantom Four that hit a a military Black Hawk helicopter, and even at that, you know, it did some damage, but it wasn't. All I'm saying is nobody got hurt. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying it was good. I'm not saying that guy didn't do something bad. I'm just saying that the incidence of anybody causing a problem with drones, they just, it's practically non-existent. I mean, have they been a nuisance to people at times? I'm, I'm quite sure. But uh, why are we subject as drone hobbyists to that kind of scrutiny that, like I said, you would not accept that in any other thing that you do uh, in your life. So, so that's a problem. Uh, so... Then limited remote identification of drones. So what that is, is, and, and that will be what will happen with all of your, your current drones. That's how you'll have to fly them because they won't have a transmitter on them to be able to go to that uh, standard remote identification. Uh, and by the way, you're going to have to subscribe to a service because the government is going to do this. You, as the hobbyist, are going to have to subscribe to a service that transmits that information and publishes it. Uh, so, with your current drone, your the, the drone provider will modify the app that you fly your drone with to supply the information uh, uh, to the public and to law enforcement of where you're flying, where you're at with your uh, uh, RC via the internet. So that means that when you have your mobile device hooked to your controller, it's going to have to have a cell phone connection. So if you're out someplace, and like I live in Idaho, so often I'm out, when I go out to the Snake River, uh, if I'm in the canyon, there's no cell connection out there. Uh, I would not be able to take off with my drone. In fact, I just can't fly a drone down there because I don't have a cell connection. I can't transmit that information. I can't. My drone won't even take off. It won't allow your drone to even take off. Uh, you know, where else would you, in your life, would you uh, accede to that kind of uh, uh, control? I mean, it just makes no sense to me. So basically, you're flying in a bubble. And And I guess what I didn't say was... You can only fly then 400 feet away. So these, this drone, this drone, when that takes effect, even if they have all this control via your remote and you're connected via the internet, you cannot fly the drone more than 400 feet away. 400 feet high, nor 400 feet away, period. Can't be done. Uh, so that's a problem. And, you know, the people that buy the Skydio, they're action sports people. They're often up in the mountains, you know, doing something, riding a snowmobile, uh, a motorcycle, or, or, or a, uh, uh, a mountain bike. They're out of cell phone range most of the time. If I'm up there on my ATV, I'm going to be out of cell phone range. Won't even take off. 
This thing is useless to me. This Skydio is absolutely useless because I don't have a cell connection. And with my re remote, it's got to be connected to the cell. That even reminds me, that would make the beacon unusable too because the beacon has no cell connection. So, yeah, so this stuff is then unusable, uh, essentially. So that's a problem. Uh, and the only other category here is the FAA Recognized Identification Area. And that's for, uh, you, you, you can fly your drone uh, without a cell connection, without transmitting anything, if you're in an FAA Recognized Area to fly. And it doesn't say how, what, you know, that can be. Uh, you know, but we've seen like, you know, model airplane currently like the AMA has uh, model aircraft areas set aside. So that's the only area you can fly. You have to maintain visual line of sight, uh, but yeah, you don't have to have remote ID capability then. But, you know, with a with a uh, photographic drone, uh, video drone like this, yeah, you're going to look at the same little piece of a, of a field down there, grass field or something. That's all you're going to be able to take a picture of. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that, that's, that's a problem. So, I guess what I'm saying is, as hobbyists, we need to write to the FAA and, and hopefully get this changed uh, before it happens. Uh, anyway, so enough about that. <laughs> I probably went into more detail there than you wanted. Uh, but, <clears throat> so, uh, CES, I'm going to be going down there to that. The, uh, the drone... You know, obviously my focus is going to be on drones. So, so I looked on on online and looked at all the different drone companies that that are going to be there. Of course, DJI is going to be there, uh, and then uh, let's see. But but I don't see uh, Fluidity is going to be there, and a bunch of these other companies that that I have on my screen here are just uh, you know various systems that may have something to do with drones in some sense but aren't necessarily uh, drone manufacturers. The other one I saw is that one that makes the... So LoomCube I see on here, uh, and PGY Tech is on here, so I'll definitely want to visit uh, their their uh, displays. Uh, so um, there's that... What's the company that makes the, uh, the, the drones that uh, can get wet? I, oh, Swell Pro. Here's Swell Pro right here. So they're the drones that, you know, you can uh, go into the water with them and back out and so forth, which is kind of interesting. I, you know, I, that's not a big deal to me, but I'll definitely want to visit their uh, uh, display and see what they got going on. And then the other one that's interesting is X-Dynamics. Now, X-Dynamics is the company that built that carbon fiber drone that just got panned by everybody. Very expensive product. Had all these promises of all these uh, cameras and stuff. Well, evidently they have another product, so so they're going to be there. So I'll definitely definitely visit uh, that booth as well, and you know whatever else there is to see. Uh, you know I'm going to wander around there and look at a lot of uh, non-drone stuff uh, as well. Uh, you know we're all interested in computers and and you know I love uh, uh, t obviously the, the, there should be some pretty cool stuff. With, uh, with TV and then mobile technology. Uh, and then I'm also interested in, uh, you know, what they can do, the, the advances in, uh, in uh, AI, artificial intelligence. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff there. I'm pretty excited about going to that. Uh, I, I might do some live streaming. I don't know, but for sure I'll record some videos there uh, that I'll get to publish uh, after the fact. And that is, uh, I think the first uh, day that all the displays are open is Tuesday, the 7th of January, I think. And then there's some media stuff. Uh, any of you guys that are fellow YouTubers, uh, look into getting your media credentials. I mean, it's, it's something that you can do. If you have over 50,000 views a month, and I have just about double that right now. I was able to get a media credential, so it should be a pretty cool thing to see. Uh, and then I have family down there, so I don't need to worry about a hotel room. I can I can stay with uh, with my dad, so that'll be good. Uh, anyway, so the the next thing on the list is the drones. Obviously, the Skydio too. And I just took this out of the box, and 
and you will uh, have already seen my what's in the box video uh, so this is really the kind of about the, almost the first time I've held it up and I don't have the battery on the back but let me tell you it it feels substantial and it feels strong and uh, it's fun seeing a drone with a little bit different form factor than what we've seen in the past you know they all kind of look the same after a while you know we've seen a lot of uh, folding drones uh, and, and and you know the Mavic was the first but they essentially all kind of look the same uh, so I'm pretty excited about the Skydio and you know I like I said I've got an ATV I've got a dual sport motorcycle I've got a road bike too so you know obviously uh, we'll we'll get out when we get some decent weather and try some of that stuff out but I'm almost more excited about being able to fly the drone with the controller in more confined spaces and not have to worry about it uh, about it running it having the confidence that it's not going to fly into a tree or something so you could fly through forested situations or something with your drone and not be as so worried about it crashing so i that's that's what i'm pretty excited about and everything i've seen so far the video quality looks awesome so now this is just the regular good old hubson xeno uh that you guys have seen this on my channel about a gazillion times uh man i, I am such a fan of the hubson xeno uh i have had more fun i probably had more fun with that little drone than any other drone that I've owned, and I, and I, I like them all, uh, and, and this is not the best at anything, and in fact, it's been troublesome in some cases, uh, but I think the fact that it, uh, you know, I paid $300, $299 is what I paid for this. I got it uh, when they had their uh, uh, Indiegogo uh, crowdfunding deal, <laughs> so I've had it over a year now. Anyway, so the Xeno 2, of course I pre-ordered it, right? I mean, uh, there's a lot of good stuff on that. And let me uh, let me get to the, the website here. So I'm on the GearBest site here. And uh, I pre-ordered it. So uh, th this will probably be expired by the time you see this because I think this price expires January 1st. And today is the 29th of, Jan of uh, December. So uh, $399.99, I just think, is just such a steal for this product and uh, let's just talk about what we're going to get a little bit here uh, so obviously <clears throat> there's upgraded distance now with the new FAA rules that are coming out are we going to care about distance because uh, this drone is not going to have that new transmitter on it and it will be nerfed to 400 feet if the FAA gets their way so uh, you know Maybe maybe distance isn't such a big deal. Of course, that's a few years off. By the time they implement it, it would be a, it'll be a few years off. So we'll get a few years of good use out of it. And you know, the, what what is the lifespan of a drone? This guy's only a year old, and it kind of seems like the old man. Although it still flies great and is a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, so uh, they say it'll fly six kilometers. Well, that's pretty darn good. I don't know that I would ever need to fly six kilometers. That's, uh, what, almost two miles, something like that. So, yeah. And then uh, uh, they have upgraded the camera where it will shoot in 4K 60 frames per second. Well, that's huge. That's a, that's a, that's a big deal. And they worked on the camera on this guy long enough that it shoots some really nice uh, video now and and so this camera not only 4k 60 frames per second but it's supposed to have a, uh, a 100 uh, megabit uh, rate on it so that I know a lot of people are, are very interested in that so uh, what else so we talked about distance we talked about the camera uh, it is gonna have finally we're gonna get some downward facing uh, sensors, a uh, uh, optical flow, uh, as as well as uh, TOF time of flight sensor. So that'll make it more stable. And that's been the, one of the biggest complaints about th this guy. Well, it, it had no sensors, so you know it would kind of wobble around a little bit. Uh, you know, we always used to joke about the Hubson drop, and to me, it was just a joke. It really didn't hurt anything. But this thing should be more stable. And one of the problems with this guy is when you turn, sometimes it would dive or it would raise up. Well, in theory, with these sensors, this thing should uh, 
should not have that kind of problem. Now they're saying that it'll have a, a flight endurance of 33 minutes. We know we're not going to get that. All these drone companies exaggerate. At least here they say windless. So they're they're admitting that it's that it you know might be optimistic. Uh, but they're also saying accurate battery power monitoring, which is a big deal. That was an issue with the Zeno, uh, the little Zeno that they that they got figured out and have done some upgrades on. Uh, so, oh, yeah, the, the other big one is uh, anybody that had this guy, you know, doing updates on it, firmware updates, uh, quite frankly, it was pretty easy to do. But but I know some people had problems with it. Uh, and, I, and I can appreciate that because it wasn't just as straightforward as, uh, as, as, you know, updating through an app or something like that. But any piece of electronics that you own from your TV to your car... My cars update their firmware uh, every so often. This computer does update. My TV does update. Everything, anything electronics. I'm, I'm staring at my modems. My modems do firmware updates from time to time. I'm looking at my GoPro camera. My GoPro camera does firmware updates. It's, it's part of what has to be done with this thing. And I know some people discourage updates on drones, but I, I always like to, I figure the manufacturers know best. And, and I like to keep up with them now. In the Xenos case, have they made mistakes in the past? And have we had some uh, bad situation or less than optimal situations with some firmware we have? Uh, but then you always, you, what, one thing about Hubson is they always allowed you to roll back to the previous version uh, and, it, and it worked fine. But hopefully we won't have those situations with the Xeno 2. It will update via the app, which is a, which is a welcome thing. So uh but uh let's hope that hubson uh, uh does a little better job of vetting vetting the firmware on on this one uh than the other one so let's see so what other big improvements i mean obviously we're going to see a big improvement on the uh on the camera uh and and uh let's see so so for images it says it will shoot in raw and it uses the h264 codec for video, uh, 12 megapixels on the camera, and I don't know exactly. So there's they're quoting the ISO ranges and so forth. So what all is going to be adjustable or not? I am not sure yet. We'll have to see that when we look at the app. Uh, gosh, what else am I seeing here? That's a bit. Oh yeah, the the uh, remote control has a display on it now that we haven't had before. I can tell you that it is it, it's nice uh having the uh, statistics uh, from your drone uh on the display uh you know knowing how far out it is where it's at and so forth uh but I don't think at the end of the day that is uh, that big of a deal and and the reason I say that is when I am flying my uh drones like my Mavic 2 that Mavic 2 controller has a nice display on there. I mean, I'm telling you, I probably never, hardly ever look at it. I'm always looking at the FPV display, at the app that gives you uh, uh, all of that information. So, uh, in any case, uh, you know, telemetry is is uh, is good, and it will be on there. And so you'll, I guess it'll give you a double, you know, if you're, phone conked out on you or something you'd at least be able to look at the telemetry on the remote control and and know that your drone was coming back to you or or where it was at so so that's probably good uh anyway so that's about it uh yeah so gosh i think we've we've covered it all uh yeah really looking forward to the xeno 2 and i i, I hate i don't know it it's kind of weird i'm almost as excited about the xeno 2 as I am about this guy uh, right here, the Skydio 2. Uh, but I haven't flown the Skydio yet, so I may get way more excited about it once I get it in the air. But uh, yeah, so that's what's going on with the Idaho Quadcopter channel. Look forward to for some updates from CES, some uh, videos about the Skydio 2, some videos about the uh, the Xeno 2. Obviously, we'll still be flying the, uh, the Mavic Mini and I'm sure the regular... Zeno and uh, gosh, I've got an Anafi video. I did a comparison test between the Mavic Mini and the Parrot Anafi. That'll be coming up pretty quick. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, hey, I may even get a 
uh, some time to fly my uh, Mavic 2 Zoom. You never know. Uh, good problems to have. Those are first world problems, folks. Uh, so anyway, uh, gosh, that's it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. Most of all, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch this video. And we absolutely will see you on the next one. Bye now.